You mentioned that you have spent some time studying the difference between, call it 20-year-olds and 60-year-olds in terms of the efficiency of muscle protein synthesis. So, and this is where you probably have to get into the isotopes, right? Now you're getting into sort of nuanced yeah. stuff. But what do we know about a 20-year-old versus a 60-year-old who's under uh, who puts their muscle under a progressive overload. So they're, they're now asking, you know, they're, they're, they're doing resistance training. Um, they're being provided with adequate amino acids and let's assume they're being provided with not just the right, uh, quantity, but the right quality of amino acid. Um, what do we know about the assimilation of that amino acid into new muscle tissue across and, and you pick any age you want. I, I just use 20 and 60, but I, I know you've studied this at very specific age points piece of background before we get into that is important to recognize that whether you're 16 or 65, your body needs to make nearly 300 grams of new protein per day. So there's a protein turnover. Every, every tissue in the body is turning over. Uh, some as fast as liver enzymes where you replace every hour. Muscle proteins where you replace with half-lives of around 15 to 16 days. So every 30 days. Collagen turns over at about half-life of 100 days, which is why if you hurt your knee, it takes so long to repair it. But basically, if you put that into thinking, the body replaces literally every protein in it about four times a year. That's a pretty remarkable number. Uh, and then if you think of, we have to make 300 grams of new protein per day, the average American intake is around 80 grams or less, women 70, men 90. Um, that means that there's a recycling thing going on. So of every new protein that's getting made in the body, about six out of seven amino acids are getting recycled. All of that sort of feeds into this process of protein synthesis, protein turnover. And what, remember, I said what I was doing with my master's degree, we were studying the age-related changes. What we now know is that as you get older, the efficiency of that protein turnover goes down. So where a 16-year-old, uh, you give them a certain amount of protein, they'll have a very good response. A 65-year-old will have maybe no response at all, or you know 10% or something. But what we have learned, sort of with the study of leucine and initiation factors and all of that, is that if you give an enriched source of essential amino acids, more protein, uh, you can actually make the adult look just like the 16-year-old. So what we know is that the efficiency goes down, but the capacity to respond doesn't. And so what we're now thinking is that what we now know is that if you have a requirement that's about twice the minimum RDA, so instead of 0.8, it's 1.6 grams per kg, uh, we can get the adult, the 65-year-old, to respond just the same as the 20-year-old as far as muscle protein synthesis. Now, you know, a moment ago, Don, we talked about how it's a slippery slope if you just focus on total protein. So when you say 1.6 grams per kilogram, does this assume it's from a whey-like product and an animal-based product? And if, if that person says, hey, I'm 65 years old and I'm on a plant-based diet, are you gonna say that number is gonna to need to be higher? So uh, that's a great question, a great way to ask it. Um, what we know is that most people who go to a plant-based diet, a vegetarian diet, decrease both the quantity and the quality. So your point is exactly right. If you're on a plant-based diet, you'll need more protein, and that means you'll have to have more calories. Um, but what's the threshold for that? What we would probably argue is that if you have 100, 120 grams of protein per day, it probably doesn't matter the distribution between animal and plant because you probably have enough to cover it, okay? Uh, if you're only eating 50 grams of protein per day, then it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. You'll never catch up to your essential amino acid needs. So somewhere between 50 and 120, it depends on what you choose. You know, so you know, if you're gonna be plant-based, you know, have 125 grams of protein per day and you're probably fine. 
But if you're going to be vegetarian and you think you're going to get along with 56 grams per day, you're going to get in trouble. Going back to this difference earlier about the, you know, call it anabolic resistance, right? Between the 65 year old and the 16 year old. The obvious thing that comes to mind is there's a huge difference in androgen level between those two. Right. What are the other things that might explain this anabolic resistance that I think, by the way, I think it's very interesting that you can overcome that by a higher amount of protein. But prior to that workaround, what else do you think explains anabolic resistance? Clearly the hormone issues are, are, are first and foremost. So, you know, I, I'm, I always make the comment that uh, when you're growing, hormones are your friend. They're sort of driving it. And you look at malnutrition in Africa and children will grow on really lousy diets. They may not grow as healthy, they may not live as long, but there's a survival reproduction nature to that. Um, Now we switch to talking about healthy aging, and I wanna live to where my parents, you know, (laughs) I wanna get to that century mark. Now we talk about healthy aging, and now we sort of change the, uh, we change the criteria that we're looking for. Um, Let's just think about mTOR for a second and try and put that in framework. Uh, There are four different signals that regulate mTOR. Uh, We've mentioned leucine. We also mentioned insulin. Uh, 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 An enzyme, uh, a factor known as AMP kinase, which is carbohydrate sense, is energy sensitive. And then another molecule known as RED1, which is stress sensitive, uh, particularly resistance exercise. So there are four different things the, the individual balances. When you're young and growing, insulin and IGF-1 dominates that. And insulin, first and foremost, is a growth hormone. And when you stop growing at 25, it ceases to have an effect on protein synthesis and muscle. And so now the shift, the whole thing shifts to protein quality. Protein quality is not nearly as important when the system's dominated by hormones. And so now what we know is as we get older, we can buffer that loss of the hormones by higher quality protein, mostly leucine, and resistance exercise. Those two factors will balance out the growth issue that young people have, the benefit of the growth part. So that's the the way you, you have to think about the change in efficiency with aging. 